I've known Dylan for, I guess, going on 12 years now. I was at Subway about 12 years ago, and I ordered my sandwich. And at the end of the line, he said, I recognized your voice as soon as you made your order. I was in church on Sunday. <laughs> and uh, he had been visiting here at Due West. And so we sat down and ate lunch then, and we've eaten lunch a whole lot of times since then. And Dylan's one of our church heroes here at Due West. Uh, He's taught Sunday school or teaching Sunday school. He's been on mission trip. Dylan does whatever needs to be done and uh, is glad to do it and does it with a a thankful heart. He's on our finance committee, but he's also chair of our stewardship committee. He's been here before, standing before you, talking about our Josiah project. And and this morning, uh, he wanted to share with you, and I wanted him to share with you about giving. And I'm thankful to call him my friend. Dylan? Thanks, Tom. Morning. Morning. If you will, turn with me to Malachi. Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament, and we're going to be reading in chapter 3, um, starting in verse 8 and ending at the end of verse 10. And verse 8 starts, Should people cheat God, yet you have cheated me? But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? But you have cheated me of the tithes and offerings due to me. You are under a curse, for your whole nation has been cheating me. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord Almighty, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great, you won't even have enough room to take it in. Try it. Let me prove it to you. Now, most churches in the country about midway through the service, right smack dab in the middle of it, something happens, right? We pass the plate. It's a time called offering. When I started going to the 939 about 12 years ago, I'd see that plate start trotting down the aisle. I'd reach my hand into my pocket, you know, so I could get some money and start peeling off some dollars, you know, so I could put in the plate. See, I gave because I thought it's what I was supposed to do. Or if you live in Georgia, it's what I was supposed to do right? No thought behind it, really. No prayer behind it. No really priority behind it. And they just throw some money in the plate. Well, that went on for a few months. And God sort of gave us a nudge, said, you know, you ought to put some thought into that. You know, stop tipping me. Put, Put some thought into it. Put some thought into it. So my wife, Tracy, and I, we, we sat down, we looked at our budget, and after we paid our taxes, and we, um, we paid our bills, you know, we took a little bit of money out for us, for what we wanted to do. We looked at the bottom of our bucket, and we came up with an amount. And we're going to give this amount every week. This is going to be a priority for us. And that's what we did for a few years. Well, all that changed um, through this revelation of Scripture here that I just read to you. And this is kind of embarrassing, but it happened, of all places, in the shower. I mean, come on. I'm thinking, God, if I've got to tell this story, maybe, you know, if I could have like the beach, or maybe I could have a a big field, or a a creek, or a nice little river. But the shower? I mean, come on. But it's a true story. And here's what God told me. He said, you're cheating me. He said, you're robbing me. But God, what? that seems so harsh. Cheating? Robbing? Yep. You're robbing me. But wait a minute, God. I'm tithing. See, I give the same amount every single week. I'm tithing. It's a priority. No. Nope. You see, I thought just because I was giving to the church, and this is a common misconception, just because I was giving to the church, that didn't mean I was tithing. I called it a tithe just because the money went to the church, Right? But a tithe means a tenth. A tithe means your first 10%. And I was really, really, really far from that. You see, even though I was giving every single week the same amount, you know what God told me? He said, that's great and all, but you're giving me your leftovers. You're putting me last instead of putting me first. Funny thing about leftovers, you know, I know when we invite people over to our house to eat, my wife, Tracy, doesn't matter what we have in the refrigerator, what we have in the pantry, she'll go out and she'll buy a whole new meal for our guests. And we'll cook it up, 
and we'll eat. And the guests, you know, they get the, the, the main meal. And then whatever's left over, then we eat the next day. You know, that's just how, how it goes. I'm sure you guys are the same way. Let me ask you this. So what if I invited you over to my house and I pulled out some of these? Hey, thanks for coming. We had a great meal last night. It was really, really good. Um, so um, let me see what I've got for you. Oh, here's some potato salad and some coleslaw. Let's eat. I mean, you'd, you'd think I was delirious and probably not come back. But here's the thing, in all seriousness, I was giving God my leftovers. See, I wasn't acting like a steward, which says that everything comes from God. It's His. It's all owned by God and I'm just a steward of it. See, I was thinking ownership, and I was acting like an owner. It was my money. I was going to do what I wanted to do with it, when I wanted to do with it. But here's the thing. Owners always give the leftovers. So what do you want me to do, God? You've convicted me enough here, okay? Robbing and cheating you. What, what is it that you want me to do? Well, you read the Scripture, didn't you? The Scripture says you have cheated me of the tithes, and offerings due to me. I want you to give of a tithe. And here's the thing. It says tithes and offerings. So what that means is the tithe, the tithe, that's not the goal. That's not the ceiling. See, the tithe, that's just the starting point. See, the tithe, that's just the minimum. And God was saying, you're robbing me of the minimum. And it's not that I just want your money, Dylan. See, that's great and all, but what I really want is I want you to trust me in that area of your life. I want you to trust me and put me first in the area of your finances. And stop giving me the leftovers. 